Hey, super cruisers, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. Are you single and love to be alone? Eat alone? Shop alone? Cry into your pillow alone if you want to. Why is that a bad thing? And who are the people making up rules and passing judgment against you? Find out how singles are discriminated against in this episode of Frank Pushes Back. So here's the big question. Is there such a thing as discrimination against single people? Well, I guess we should ask all the single people to see what they say, because I'm thinking they're probably going to all say, mm, yeah. But you know what? Let's talk statistics first. Did you know that 50% of all adult people here in the United States are single? Yeah. And of those single Americans, it's pretty evenly split between men and women, you know, kind of 50-50. And in the entire world, supposedly, there are 2.12 billion single people on Earth, as reported by from about 230 countries. That's where those stats come from. So, we ask the question. Is there a cultural bias against single people? Well, from social psychologist Bella DiPaolo, author of the book Singled Out, How Singles Are Stereotyped, Stigmatized, and Ignored, and Still Live Happily Ever After. Now, she sees it as the stigmatizing of people who are single, whether through divorce, or becoming widowed, or just forever single. And that is supposedly, in her view, the 21st century problem um, that she has termed singleism. Now, singleism refers to the stereotyping, stigmatizing, and discrimination against people who are not married. And likewise, matrimonia is the over celebration and hyping up of marriages relationships, and weddings. From company forms to online account security questions, the assumption is that one is married through questions like, what city did you get engaged in? What place did you have your wedding? Why is everyone assuming we're married? You know, there are single people out there. I'm, I'm not one of them, but I was for a long time. Now, it's very similar, okay, to the typical social family questions of, so, what do you do for a living? Okay, well, maybe they're unemployed, okay, or maybe they're just a trust fund baby. You know, don't assume they're working, you know. Okay, or asking a man if he has a wife or girlfriend. I mean, never thinking that he might be gay and have a husband. Or a boyfriend. And well, to all the poor women out there, okay, who constantly have to defend themselves against their mothers and grandmothers. So, when are you going to get married and have children? Well, maybe they don't want kids. Okay, maybe they love their lives alone as it is. Did you ever think of that? Stop the pressure. Then we can get into issues that come from work. Yeah, work issues. Mmm, singleism. What's that all about? Well, I'm going to tell you. Is it okay to ask singles to cover for their married co-workers? Okay, a boss tells an employee, quote, you're single. You don't need to race home for your spouse or kids. I need someone to work nights and weekends and stay late. Mmm. Mm. Or a co-worker 
who has a lot of family and children obligations, and of course asks the single worker to cover for them. Is it fair to ask a single co-worker to pick up the slack at work? No, it's not. I'll tell you that right off. It, it, it ain't. And what about your paycheck? Because now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Your paycheck is a single. The bias against single workers can even extend to your paycheck. An employer might think, you're single, and so you have fewer expenses than my employees that have spouses and children. They need the money more. God, that's like 1950s thinking. Seriously? Equal pay for equal work. Had to be said. And what about the effect on the mental and physical health of singles? Now, negative stereotyping can have a severe impact on one's self-esteem as a single by what others perceive of you. Now, let's take a look at one study of 1,000 undergraduate students, okay? It's interesting because they were asked to list characteristics um, that they associated with married and single individuals. And here's their response. Okay, this is what they thought. Married individuals were more likely to be described positively, being referred to as mature, happy, kind, honest, and loving. Conversely, they said of singles, eh, they were perceived to be immature, insecure, self-centered, unhappy, lonely, and even ugly. Can you imagine living with that every day? Thanks a lot. No one needs to have all of that thrown onto them just because they're single. But a lot of these are perceptions of singles that a lot of people have. Now, another part of the study asked the same undergraduate students to describe married and singles at two different ages, one at 25 years old and the other group of singles at 40 years old, and found that the negative traits of singles became more pronounced with age. 40-year-old singles were deemed to be particularly socially immature, not well-adjusted, and more envious. Mmm. Huh? Come on. These discriminations can manifest themselves into a host of mental and physical issues like weight gain, obesity, high blood pressure, as well as increased smoking, alcohol consumption, and substance abuse. Unmarried inequality sometimes results in more pressure on singles to do things that they don't want to do. Peer pressure, people! Enough! Now, Bella DiPaolo states that the deficit narrative of single life may be costing people their rights and their lives. Now, deficit narrative is defined as teachings that explain only the negative parts of history, placing a group of people as victims of different societal problems instead of presenting a complete history of accomplishments as well. Okay? Very self-explanatory. Again, focusing on the negative. Now, single people are not the only group unfairly portrayed as deficient by research labeled as scientific. Well, we all know early social science writings on people of color, as well as gay men and lesbians, for instance, also peddled deficit narratives, always focusing on the negative of our lives. So by now you're saying, why is Frank going on and on about all of this? Single people, singleism, what's the deal, what's the story? Yeah, there's a story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I'm going to end this with a story that prompted me to do this video. I read a story about a woman who went to a Korean barbecue restaurant in Fullerton, California, and was denied being seated because she was alone and 
a party of one. She was told to come back and bring a friend, as the restaurant apparently had a strict two-person minimum policy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, continued reading, did some research. Apparently, many of the all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue restaurants don't allow solo diners. Sorry, you can't go. No Korean barbecue for you. Yeah. Now, according to the Korean guide, eating alone at a Korean barbecue, although not a taboo, isn't necessarily the best thing either. Most restaurants still expect you to order at least two meals. This would, in effect, be the same as having another person with you. Now, I know that businesses set their own policies, okay? I'm not jumping down anyone's throat, but geez. Geez Louise, the girl was just jonesing for some Korean barbecue. You know, I wonder if they even allowed her to do takeout. Hmm, never thought of that. It's crazy. I'm a single, and I can't eat at your restaurant? What era are we living in? When will the discrimination end? So there, I put it all out for you. Uh, let me know what you think. Comment below. What do you think? Is there singleism out there? You be the judge. I want to thank you for joining me today for this video of Frank Pushes Back. And on behalf of Kevin and myself, don't just watch our videos. Become a regular Cruising with Wheels family member and click that subscribe button and that little bell next to it. You'll get automatic notifications of when our videos go live and when we go live in our live streams. And remember, you can also find us on all the other social media platforms because we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. So I want to remind all of you to always travel safe and cruise often.